I have not had a good year. I have not. If the year I left behind were the lights behind me, then the year ahead is the darkness I'm staring into with this couch being 2024. But, like a lot of good-hearted men and women, I know y'all are out there. I know. I know exactly how you're feeling right now. In my case, I was running for City Council of Maple Grove. But for some reason, I really enjoyed the results. Let me explain. I did get last place. I was one of many candidates on the ballot. There were like seven this year. In Maple Grove, whoever gets the top two most votes, and you can only pick two, wins. I think this is a bullshit system. But everyone else's solution seems to be, well, let's just enable gen gerrymandering. Let's segment uh, half of Maple Grove on the south end with North Maple Grove and another district that's just the south end because the south end has more people in it and that's where that's where a lot of intelligent people with good minds and hearts live. I don't live in that half. I live in the other half where there is less of that But there are still good and kind-hearted men and women here. I would like to think I am one of them. Granted, having autism does not really help with campaigning. Also, I act very anxious in public. The way I express my anxiety might be perceived as rude, but I'm autistic, so that's going to happen anyway. And the more anxious I get about that, the worse the room tends to read me. But on YouTube, I don't really have to worry much about that. I know I'm staring at a thing and talking to a thing that is going to send this message to whoever is interested. And the fact is, Trump won the 2024 presidential election. I am not going to spend any time thinking why. There is no point. I'm not a Republican. I'm mature enough to handle a loss. And if you want to know what winning feels like, you have to lose sometimes. And this year, in 2024, I've gotten a bit of else. This t-shirt is the logo of the Minnesota Lynx, my favorite sports team in the state. They did not win the WNBA Finals. They did not get the fifth one. New York City got its first. 
I was really chomping at the bit. I was really hoping they would pull it out. A win. Pull out a win. On their turf, in front of the smug faces of all those celebrities. I did not get that. I was hoping for the Vikings, the Minnesota Vikings, this hat the, in the dark, I was hoping they would stay first NFC North all season. That did not happen. Right now, they are second NFC North, and the first is the Detroit Lions. I'm old enough to remember when the Detroit Lions, the grid fee, grid iron NFL football team, American, I don't like calling it American football, I prefer grid iron, but I digress. That's the team that went 0 16 in one season. The year behind me, it was pretty much all wins. The Minnesota DFL took the first trifecta ever in uh, my entire time living here. I know they had one in 2012, and it was fine, but... The, well, 2013 in the actual years of legislating. I know they had one in 2013, and it was fine, but that was gone in 2015. And it laid the foundation for the 2023 trifecta elected in 2022, in which Governor Tim Walls did the thing Guaranteed school lunches and breakfasts. And we're going to keep doing that. That's a part of our state identity now. I know California was technically the first, but I'm not really a fan of California. I'm a Midwesterner. I live in Minnesota, in the suburbs. And I live in the part of Maple Grove that has people who know what it feels like to lose. We have more of that on the north end where I live. And I lost. I decided to take a unique approach to this campaign, but I still got last place. Here's the part that makes me laugh really hard. I got 1790 votes in Maple Grove, a suburb that can be described as light red or light blue depending on how it feels, in local politics. And it always seems to go in the pattern of years that don't change the composition at all. This is why I believe that if you really want to call yourself a patriotic American, you have to make voting and participation in politics a regular part of your life. I can say that I got 1,790 votes, which is more votes than most other people. 
I might have the most votes of any candidate that ran for any office in my extended Minnesota family. I will have to double check that. But it was still last place in Maple Grove. And there were still 1,790 souls who elected the open gay furry. With public anxiety problems. That's a bold move. That's really brave. And that's really sweet and caring. And I thank all of you for doing that, even if it was just, you saw my name when I was working retail in that badge that one time. The fact that you acknowledged I exist and chose my name is wonderful. But then there's the guy who got the second least votes. It was his first run for office, too. His first ever. And because he ran, and because there is recorded footage of him, he is enough of a public figure where I can say his name. It's Josh Provo. I've seen this, uh, seen this annoying idiot running around a few times. It wasn't just the, um... The forum, there's school board footage. I believe we were both in the same room when uh, that fiasco happened where I tried to make a joke about, you know, if you really want to get rid of what you call porn, which is a term too subjective to make any constitutionally binding law about, With that word in it, you have to be more specific. And you have to make sure that if everyone consents to it, the viewing, the work, they're allowed to do this. This is America. Again, I digress. And there are a number of psychological reasons that people under the age of 18 should not be looking at it. But I told them to give it to me. And these are books, right? It's not like they're staring at their laptop or their Android smartphone. Or their Linux machine. And whipping it out and doing a quickie. In literature... There is much more room to put a much better story than you'll ever find on video, um, adult-only websites. I said give the books to me. You will never see them again. And if you don't give children the proper sex education, they don't do, do like, you know, the Chicago Method where in like first grade, good touch, bad touch, and then uh, building on that, having self-defense techniques, and then fifth grade, sixth grade, that's where they teach puberty, and you know, you can get into sex ed electives by the time you're a senior type of thing. I don't know exactly how it works, I just know that's how they, they have an all grade sex education, and I was trying to push for that and say, if you don't do that, you're going to have people who feel so lost about this stuff that they're going to be just like me. A furry. A guy who calls himself gay, pan, and bisexual. And didn't really sift through any of that. And finally figure out, okay, mostly men... Romantic, physical, and women in certain scenarios, and that it's okay 
to be like that. I didn't get that when I was a kid. I didn't get that in Georgia. I didn't get that in Wyoming. They did the most for me. This was Governor Friedenthal. This was when politics uh, were way less polarized and there were, you know, sacred things that we shouldn't just dump in the trash because we feel like it. Like having sex ed being taught with puberty and Wyoming didn't tell us much about contraceptives other than they existed. That was uh, a different... It varied from district to district. I don't know what the whole state does now, and I do not care about Wyoming. I the Politics in America will only be fixed when I, a Minnesota DFL Democrat, can go to Frontier Days safely with a flannel shirt and an American flag t-shirt and a furry tail and some pride flag. That's when I know our politics will be fixed. We're not there. We won't be until we're out of the tunnel. But I'm going to be with you all the way to the end of that. So anyway, Josh Provo uh, spent money on a bunch of yard signs. He did have a skeleton crew of canvassers, and he bested me by 118 votes. You need well over 10,000 to win in Maple Grove. He spent money to get slightly ahead of a furry, which means one effort for Josh Provo is going to produce, it's going to yield less results than if I did that. Uh middle-functioning autistic furry. And the YouTube videos help. They help me communicate here on the internet and help me focus on a message. A message that seems all over the place until you realize that this is a concession speech for my candidacy this year. Not of my opinions, just the campaign. I obviously lost, but I know. I could win if I tried hard. And that if Josh Provo did the same thing, he would lose. It may even backfire. Also, small businesses are usually supposed to want more customers. You should want more housing in Maple Grove then. That's what he does. His whole thing just reeked of, I'm complaining about my job and I want another one. Which is orders of magnitude worse than, you know, I currently do this job that I said the forum. And then just introduced myself, like. If I did win, I, I would still be working at that lower paying job because I don't want to be bored all the time. But sometimes it's good to be bored. Sometimes it's good to sit back and relax. Mess around, watch stuff. As long as you're using that to build up energy and inspiration to get back in the fight. I lost. Kamala Harris lost. Donald Trump won. The media has a bunch of theories that are not mine. They're not 
collections of data, their vibes there. You know, maybe women don't respect their bodies as much as they used to, maybe. It was anger, you know, weaponized anger of men, which is how all democracies fall. That weaponizing of male anger thing has always made society worse when it's used by any government ever, by any politician or political system ever. Men do not have to be miserable. I choose not to be. I choose to be comfortable with who I am and not let others tell me what that is. Sure, I might be anxious by, in how others see that and if it's positive or negative, but no matter what, from now until the end of the tunnel, I will continue to be me. And I will continue to be with you. I have three YouTube channels. And they're kind of... Prep. And there is still months of time to prepare. But we gotta be doing it. We gotta be vigilant. Because what fascism is, is a machine. Not a living, breathing, loving human being. There's no love in fascism at all. It's just an anger-driven machine of misery that sucks the joy out of everything. It is everyone's natural right to destroy it every possible way that they can. This is the YouTube channel where I say my opinions on stuff. It is a YouTube channel where I read the United States Constitution in its entirety. It's also going to be the exact same channel where I will dive head first into the enemy's head and read the entirety of the art of war. Atlas Shrug, that's child's play. People who read that are just way gullible, extremely easy to manipulate. Like, they really have big heads, but not strong bodies to back it up with those folks. But with the Art of War, it's different. I will read that in its entirety. I will give my reaction to every point, well not every point, but the points that warrant a reaction. It's a public domain book. And help you with that. Because I know you don't want to live in a world with a joy-sucking machine, a soul-sucking machine. A life-sucking murder machine. So you don't want to be in that. Because I said it. You know, and the YouTube algorithm did its thing. But it's also natural to want joy and happiness. That needs to come back somehow. And I find a lot of joy in knowing every step towards the end of the tunnel. My enemies are going to be very mad. They're going to trip. They're going to fall. And 
it's even funnier when they don't beg for mercy. All you have to do to escape that, if you're on the flip side of this, because let's face it, whether Trump is in or out of the White House, the people who voted for him are constantly miserable, no matter what. You could aim your life more towards things that bring you joy, and you can use what you learn from that against your enemy. That's why my second channel is Open Source Toys. Uh, broken rest, of course. This screen is deep red. I'm on a lot of Team Reds in tech, but certainly not in politics. And, uh, with that password, I'm now inside of KDE Neon. This is a Linux distribution, a GNU slash Linux distribution of the GNU slash Linux operating system. It looks like that, and in normal colors, Except no, it's KDE Plasma inside its own operating system based on the solid foundation of Ubuntu, based on the solid foundation of Debian. Plasma is the desktop environment. It's the window, the thing that manages the windows. And you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. And its default layout looks identical to Windows 7. There are more functions in that, of course, than Windows 7. And that's why they don't get in any legal trouble. It was better than Windows 7 out the gate, but the reason people didn't do didn't have it on their computers, this KDE magic, is because not a lot of things are compatible with GNU plus plus Linux. Not really. Until now. You can't get the Adobe Suite. There are some gaming companies that feel really annoyed and completely misunderstand what Linux is. Because they make everything for Windows. And Linux doesn't have as high of a user share. But one good thing is that it's growing. It's growing because Microsoft got cocky. They overplayed their hand. People are switching to Linux so hard that Microsoft needed to make a virtual environment for people who wanted to use Linux instead. It's called Windows Subsystem for Linux. It's mainly there for developers. You can also switch your whole computer over to the operating system and if you don't game very much or if you don't do gaming on YouTube yet or Twitch and you can just cop out and say, you know what, I only do indie games, and most indie games are compatible with Linux, so there you go, it's going to be mostly those. 
and uh, maybe occasional furry stuff that's more proprietary, that works with the steams and the protons, and just avoid the AAA titles, then yeah. Uh, uh, Linux is fine for me. Not on this, though. Uh, this is a laptop that I use in this part of the house if I want something with good typing posture while I devour delicious food. The big rig, the Frankenputer, the Wunder Machine. That's in my bedroom over there. I, I'm not looking at it because there's a wall. But yeah, yeah, that's what that is. Um, it's souped up, there's wires, it's like some cyberpunk fever dream. The only thing that's missing from it is like some cool neons. Like I have a fluorescent, but I'm filming in here right now because it matches the vibe more. I'm not going to lie to you and say things are going to suddenly get better just because we feel happier going in to a presidency that is hell-bent on taking all of that away from you. Because that is their whole thing. That is their personality. That is who they are. Those are fascists. They take pleasure in building this misery machine and knowing that it has no point other than to make you miserable. So, with the channel Open Source Toys, I'll give you some programs that you can play around with. Most of them are compatible with Windows 2, but I'll give you a taste of what real computing looks like. And how you can have some real fun with my preferred weapon of choice. Emphasis on preferred. I will. Make computers fun, like the like they were t to me in like 1999 and 2000. I will show you the world of computers through different eyes. I'll put my energy into being your cyber defense. I will help you learn that as I go. I'll be the clown that keeps you going. That brings joy into your trod. Through the year that lies ahead until we reach the end of the time. The third channel with like one hand, because I, I think. No, he did two peace signs. Never mind. Double three finger salute. As we head into the year ahead, I have a third channel and it's called Fun with Numbers. A lot of people have a lot of number related questions on their mind. 
But no one really digs through them very hard. There's usually something added into the mix that's unrelated to the numbers that are being calculated. But being able to crunch numbers is an essential skill. If you look at a 20% tip that looks like it's more than a 20% tip, I promise you that is not all going to the wait staff. Or as a tip pool for the wait staff and the back of the house. The head of the house is taking some of that difference as well, even though that is very illegal. I mean, if we're not going to have the rule of law enforced with our systems, we still have to do it with our hearts, our minds, and our mouths. And we need to be able to think about whether something is worth doing or not. And numbers are really good with that. Data really helps figure that out. So you have fun with numbers where I calculate things, might do some scripting, some light scripting and a few if thens at most. And then there's open source toys where I can do even more wacky stuff, where I can show you the fun in programming, in communication, and in ethical hacking. And right now, especially for those of you that have been invested enough to watch this all the way to the end. Here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. You need to find people who know computers and are friendly to you. They're not that hard to find. I'm a furry, so easy peasy for me. But even if you're not, and you're straight, or you're just some dude who loves to game but doesn't like the thought of uh, the way the game industry is, and that's why you voted for Harris, or something like that. You need to find a buddy that has computer skills and is friendly enough and is enough of your friend to share what they learned with you. And you need to be as willing to share that as possible. I would not like my full personality to be presented to YouTube in such dire conditions. But I promise I will be with you until the end of the tunnel. No matter what. We're not gonna get out of this without bravery and focus. And giving as much love we need to the people who need and deserve it. Bravery, focus, love. Find weak points in the enemy.
make friends with everything in your life and everyone in your life. That can help you. And then give that back. I don't have time for fear. I don't have time for cowards. But I do have time to teach. And I have time to help out in any and every way that I can. And uh, I will have time. I will have time to make it to the end of the tunnel. And I promise you, there will come a day where we will see it together. We will see it. And we will be free. And as always, Subscribe if you like, and share if you care.